Good afternoon. My name is Elias Pack, and I will be presenting on the positive effects of team sports on high schoolers. Do you remember watching all those movies and television shows about high school sports? Well, they may be a thing of the past for American students, as schools nationwide have continued to remove sports programs in the wake of budget cuts. Many school officials and parents alike don't see sports as a must-have for schools, considering they aren't educational. My research question is, to what extent is it beneficial for American high schools to provide free sports programs? As stated by Alicia Garcia's in her studies, exercise was often strongly correlated with improvements in mood, which weren't seen in her control group of, children, of kids that who did not exercise. In showing that the control group did not get the same mood improvements, it is clear that there are positive mental effects that are associated with physical fitness, cementing the fact that sports should be kept. It's also noted by a shock that some of the main things that former athletes remember from their time in sports were some of the esteemed support messages that focused on their abilities and reinforced relationships, and some of the emotional support messages that enhanced well-being and helped improve performance given to them by their coaches and teammates. Considering schools should have the best interest of the students, it doesn't make sense at all to remove sports, considering many adolescents might require mental health support and doing it through a team sport might be the best method for some to do so. Swick saw in her research that athletes are less likely to take drugs than their peers and have lower rates of anxiety and depression as well. And this is no coincidence as proven by the graph on the right, which shows that students from a survey, uh, sorry, shows that students from a survey who played a fall sport were overall less depressed than their peers who didn't. If high schools keep cutting these programs, student athletes' mental health decline will not go unnoticed. And if they become more depressed, schools will have provided their students with an overall negative experience that already comes from the educational burden that burdens them. <laughs> it is also seen that sports can help with the social aspect of high school. Fitzgerald states in his paper, that team sports help invisible students to develop relationships and connections with others. And since team sports are rooted in communication and cooperation, it's easy to see how they can do so and be so important to certain students. Since being a quote unquote shut in has many negative effects, it is crucial that sports be accessible to all so that they can impact as many students as possible. Lastly, Sports are seen to improve academic performance as well. With Pfeiffer stating and noting how they don't actually reduce the productivity, but rather deter bad habits that will. Leisure activities such as video gaming and extensive social media use can take up a lot of time that could be used for studying or doing other school related work. But simply having a sport to invest time into will often prevent this from happening. If certain schools were convinced by no other claim, they should be by this one, considering it is what impacts them directly. Um, if sports help with productivity, this can lead students to doing better in their classes, which is the whole point of education in the first place, and will help students prepare for later life. This is further supported by the graph on the right as well, which shows that students of both genders, when enrolled in a fall sport or spring sport had overall feelings and of oh, had noted that their motivation to work and their productivity had gone up due to their extracurricular and in a more straightforward showing fox's um, data shows direct correlation between the two factors stating that team sports participation in high school has a direct relation to a higher gpa which is added onto by the charts on the right, which shows similar statistics, but from a different bunch of athletes. It is shown in another work by Richard Bailey that three large scale studies had also found direct proportion between amount of physical activity and academic enhancement. And seeing as better grades benefits both students and staff, there should be an insurmountable evidence that if cuts be made, sports not have a target on their back. The benefits vastly outweigh the criticisms and provide athletes with more than is shown on the surface level. However, there are still some objections to this proposal. Although it is generally shown that sports do not serve as distractions, this may not be the case for some, and some students may not reap the benefits that are seen by others. It is also told by Beccaro in his piece that some of the students that he interviewed had noted the pressures that they felt from doing sports given to them by their parents and coaches. 
And if unnecessary stress were to come from sports, some schools may have to reconsider the benefits if some students, uh, if the benefits for some students are enough to keep sports or if they simply just enable parents and coaches to take out their anger on their students and athletes. However, despite objections, the overall benefits of sports warrant a stay in high schools across the nation due to their benefits of mental health, provisions of academic performance, and helpful social skills that they provide to student athletes. It's quite clear why sports are an integral part of the high school experience for some. So when a school's budget needs to be assessed, they should choose to keep sports and overlook it for removal as it has a clear positive impact on their students. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? I do have two questions. First question. Uh, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use and why'd you choose not to use it? Um, I gathered a lot of evidence for the point of um, sports bringing money to the schools, but there was simply not enough evidence, and I couldn't fit it into any of my other points, so I had to um, exclude a lot of it because it just simply wasn't, it wasn't big enough of a point for me to include it. All right, and what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? Um, I would have advice for them, maybe to um, see some of the differences in gender and how maybe male or female athletes are differently affected by sports and how maybe male athletes maybe get more of it out of it than female athletes so that they may focus on whether female sports should be dx or even male sports 